Hi, okay. In this video, we're going to do a quick example of logistic regression. Um, and we're going to do this based on the example of the sinking of the Titanic. Um, this is not a health sciences example, but it's a similar setup in that there are explanatory variables and a very clear response of interest. And in this case, it's survival. And that's actually a very common endpoint in, in uh, health sciences examples. Even if it's not exactly somebody dying, it may be time to remission, or it may be how long it takes, in, or it may be um, uh, whether somebody's cured or not cured, or whether they have a disease or not have a disease. But it, in any case, a very clear uh, uh, binary dichotomous outcome. It's either there or it's not, they either survived or they didn't. In this case, we're measuring people. Those people who were passengers on the Titanic, and in fact, the population that we can generalize to is only the Titanic, unless we had another boat exactly like it that hit an iceberg in the middle of the North, North Atlantic in the early 20th century. But, uh, so we actually have population data, so we, but we just want to understand exactly how these variables relate to one another. The variables we're interested in are whether each person in the boat survived or not, or the sex of each person, their age, and their class of travel. Let's take a quick look at this data. So here we are in JMP. We actually even have the name of each person traveling. We have uh, their class of travel, whether it was upper class, or as you can see down here, whether it was steerage. And upper class obviously had the upper class cabins in the upper part of the ship. Uh, and the steerage passengers were below decks in somewhat less luxurious accommodation. Um, we have age on each person, but you can see a lot of the age uh, variables are missing for the people in steerage. They just sort of packed them in and didn't always have information on all those people. We have the sex of each passenger, and we have whether they survived or not. The first thing we're going to do is do th three independent uh, analyses of, these, of, of each of the covariates to see how each one of them affects uh, survival and to see whether they're each important. Now, obviously, as you can see, uh, because each variable is uh, of a specific type, notably class and sex are nominal variables, as well as survival, age is the only continuous variable. When we do the analysis of these, the automatic uh, analysis type in JMP is a contingency table analysis because we have a nominal response and a nominal predictor variable. And as you can see here uh, in this first analysis, which was survival by class of travel, you can see that uh, when zero uh, indicated that the person died and one indicated that the person survived, um, the, people that, the proportion of people in steerage that died relative to the proportion of people in the upper class that died is far greater. So if you were in steerage, it looked like you were much more likely to die. Uh, then survived the accident. Let's look at the odds ratio to corroborate that. And as we remember from the odds ratio, it's calculating now the odds for survived equals zero. So the odds that the individual died, an individual died in steerage compared to the odds that an individual died in the upper class travel. And here you can see that odds ratio is 4.46. So if you were in steerage during this accident, you were four times more likely to die than you were if you were in upper class. Here you can see the regression of age on um, on survival. So you can see here that the uh, this line, of course, models the conditional probability of survival for any given age. So you can see here that a 70-year-old appears from the model to be more likely to survive than a 10-year-old. But this is averaged over all of the ages. But you, in, but you can see that the shape of this line, governed by the coefficient for age, this coefficient is positive. So as age gets larger, the probability of survival which was coded as 1, increases. Here you can now see the analysis of uh, age of sex by uh, survival. So you can again see here that the proportion of people that died that were female uh, relative to the proportion that died for males was far lower. So it looked like males were more likely to die than, than women were. Let's look at the odds ratio. And again, this is looking at the odds then of dying for a woman compared to the odds of dying if you're a man. And here you can see the odds of dying if you're a woman is one-tenth the odds of dying if you're a man. So, in fact, uh, men were much more likely to die. But we don't know exactly whether that's due to class of travel or gender. Perhaps everybody in steerage class was a man. Um, so if you died, was it because you're a man or was it because you're in steerage? So we need to, uh, to assess that. We need to do a full regression model and look at the response. Oh, uh, one thing first. Let's go back to our scientific questions. We need, we want to know, um, were women given priority uh, uh, in access to safety equipment, the lifeboats, the other survival equipment? Uh, were children given priority? 
and was there a difference in survival for each class of travel? And we kind of, you could, one could say that we just uh, analyzed the results for each of these three possible outcomes in those three separate analyses, but as I said, those don't account necessarily for whether um, there might be a relationship between these two variables. Uh, it just looks at each variable separately. So to really answer this question, we need to do a multivariate analysis and get the adjusted estimates for survival of women, for survival of children, survival of travel. But the other key is here, we actually don't have an indicator for children. We just have age. So I'd rather actually look at the effect just specifically on children. So here we're going to do, uh, we're going to add the, the child variable. And we're going to say that zero is for adults and one equals children. I can't spell children. Children. So now we need to add a formula to this to recode age into this sort of uh, structure. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to say if somebody's age is less than 15, then we want to call this variable a 1. If it's not less than 15, then we want to say if age is greater than or equal to 15, then I'm going to call it a 0. Otherwise, do nothing. So here you can now see for the 29-year-old, we're coding their child variable as a zero. For the two-year-old, we're coding that as a one. I just picked 15 out of the hat. Seems reasonable as in the early part of the 20th century that 16, 17-year-olds would have been treated more like adults. Um, and you can see where there are missing values here. We kept the missing values over here. So for the people that we don't know the age of, we're not going to be able to analyze them for now. So let's continue and do our full analysis here. We want to do, uh, oh, and I have to correct that variable type. It's still in here as a continuous variable. I want it to be a nominal variable because it's just an indicator of whether they're a child or not. So let's do fit, and we want to do survival as our response, and we want to see whether children, sex, and class of travel affect survival. Here's the result of our full regression model. So as you can see, the whole model test, this is telling us whether the test is, is a indicating very significant, very convincing significance, then in fact our model is a good fit to this data. Um, in fact, you can look now further down here and each of the predictors, the class of travel, the sex, and whether they're a ch child or not, is each separately very significant. And since we're doing the multiple regression analysis, we're adjusting the effect of sex for the adjust of, for the effect of class of travel. So that if everybody in class of travel had been a man, these two results would be identical. Clearly, they're not identical. The results are significant. So there is an effect separately of what your sex is, and separately, whether you're a man or a woman, there is also an effect of class of travel. And let's look closer at what this is. Remember, each of our variables were zeros and ones, but some of those variables, as we'll look over here, were words, upper, steerage, male, and female. Uh, JMP has to recode those as zeros and ones to mathematically determine the odds ratio. So here the uh, code in brackets here is telling us which category it called zero. Here it's saying that steerage is zero, upper class is one. Here it's saying sex is zero, male is one. So interpret, interpreting these, for sex equals female compared to male, men, where x equals one, the coefficient is negative. So as you move from zero to one, the probability of survival goes way down. Here, as you go from steerage to upper, the coefficient is positive. The probability of survival goes up in, in upper class compared to steerage. Here, child is coded zero as zero, appropriately. So the probability of survival, since the coefficient is positive, the probability of survival goes up as you go from zero to one. Let's confirm this in our odds ratios. And Nicely, in the logistic regression, it gives us a little bit more information about the odds ratio. So it's telling us the odds of zero. So the odds of zero is the odds of dying. And then it gives us more detail. So the odds of dying, if you are in upper level of travel compared to steerage, are about one-fifth. Or as we saw in the uh, individual analysis, the odds of dying if you are in steerage, one over the odds of dying if you are in upper, are almost five times higher than they were if you were in upper class. Now let's look at gender. The odds of dying, if you are a male, 
are now 13 times higher than they are of dying if you were a female. This is a little higher than it was in the independent analysis because we're now adjusting also for level of travel, and it does indicate that there may have been a substantial portion of people in steerage that were male. But nonetheless, we do see even even more exaggerated effect of gender. So in fact, there was a very large preference for women to get access to the safety equipment first. Down here for children versus adults, now this is saying the odds of, survive, of, of dying for, because remember this is telling us that for survived equals zero, the odds of dying for children, x equals one, are one quarter the odds of dying if you are an adult. So you'll notice, remember, in the independent analysis when we used age as a continuous variable, we saw an increasing effect of survival with age. Well, that is likely now that we compare it to the odds of surviving if you're children. It's because you, when you average the effective age over all of the ages on the boat, there were probably a lot of people who were older, more affluent on the boat, and the more elderly of those were allowed to get access to the safety equipment. But when we look specifically just at children, the younger children, there were so few of them, but they were more, much more likely to survive. In fact, being a child was a quarter the chance of dying as if you were not a child. So let's look back at our questions and based on this analysis, give an answer. Yes, women were, what, were much more likely to survive for uh, what was the second question? The second question was, were children given priority? Yes, children were given priority. The odds, the relative odds of dying, dying if you are a child compared are one quarter approximately the odds of dying if you were and adult. So the children were clearly pulled out and chucked into the boat. Uh, was there an effect of the class of travel? Yes, there was a large effect on of the class of travel. Let's look at that again. The effect of travel was that the upper class people were one fifth as likely to die as the steerage class, or that the steerage class people were almost five times more likely. So hopefully this is an illustrative example. You can refer back to it to sort of as a translation dictionary to understand your future output compared to this. You can take your output and understand through this that what the comparisons are being made. It's pretty easy to remember in the Titanic that women and children were first. So if you see a result like this, you can translate this as the other category has a much lower chance of probability of y equal one. And hopefully this will be give you some insights into your future sea travel and your future logistic regression. If you think I've missed anything, please add them to the comments.